Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Mini True Nerd, and welcome to Fallout 4 VR. It's like Fallout 4, except I can gesticulate a little bit better with this Pip-Boy, and this gun, and all of this water, and just, you know, go some nice little Molotov cocktail fishing. Honestly, the Molotov cocktail fishing isn't going great, all things considered. So, here we are. This is Fallout 4 VR. Now... I wanted to begin here, you probably noticed I've started like, you know, a couple of centuries after the game begins and all of that. Yeah, kind of important I start here, because there's one thing I want to explain, which is, I have absolutely no cooking view- Ooh, the Pip-Boy does that, by the way. No cooking view- What? I'm just going to put the Pip-Boy back here. No cooking view what the actual game is going to look like when I upload this to YouTube. I do not know. VR games are hard to record sometimes. They've got this thing called spectator mode, because I see one thing, and the computer, which is over- there somewhere, I just kind of fired some bullets at it, it's somewhere over there. Uh, the computer basically displays a spectator mode that's a bit different, because VR doesn't, like, you know, it doesn't use normal resolutions, and it doesn't use normal aspect ratios or anything, actually. So, as a result of that, yeah, VR is weird, and Fallout 4 VR's spectator mode doesn't appear to be a spectacularly good one. So I've been fiddling with it, like, literally for the past six hours, trying to figure out the best way to record this. I think I've got something that works, which is what you're seeing right now is probably one, one of my two eyes. I haven't decided which one I'm going to go for yet, so if this is currently pointing at you, I went for left, and if it's currently pointing at you, I went for right. Or, if neither of the above, then I've just pointed the gun in the wrong direction, it doesn't work like how I think it should. Oh, what if you can shoot yourself in this? No, you can't. You cannot shoot yourself in Fallout 4 VR. Question number one answered. Anyway, as I was saying, let's get on with this. The story actually begins a couple of centuries earlier. The new game, however, is slightly on the strange side because you realise as you start, you're literally playing as the mirror. Right now, I am playing as the mirror, and that's really cocking weird. And it's just weird in general that I've played this game so many times, and now all of a sudden these people are all weird and 3D, and I can put my face inside theirs if I... Ah! There you go. That's what the inside of this guy's face looks like. If you've ever been curious what the inside of the Fallout 4 protagonists look like, they're weirdly hollow. This is the problem with VR. VR, it's very easy to put your face through things. Sometimes in slightly game or plot-breaking ways. We'll get to that in a second. Also, slightly odd thing in this game, they've kind of taken away some of the, um, the personalization. You can't actually personalize in any great detail. I can swap them around because if I want to play as, like, the guy or the woman, but other than skipping through presets, I can't actually personalize in any way, I don't think. I don't see any way to actually personalize. So that's kind of odd. I guess maybe it's because, like, you can't make changes to the body in this mode, because it would kind of mess up, like, how tall you were or whatever, and that would be harder to do. But yeah, you're actually, um, stuck with presets. The interesting thing about VR that you kind of probably don't get unless you actually play it is things are really big in VR. Like Codsworth, you're just used to being on a screen. But if we move over to Codsworth here, he's really cocky big. <laughs> like, really big. Like, his eyes are taller than me. He's probably hovering what looks like about six and a half feet, maybe six feet off the ground in total. And he's cocking massive. And he's got a flipping flamethrower and a buzzsaw. And I feel like actually, in the real world, I probably wouldn't want one of these in my house. Because I'd ask why he needs a flipping buzzsaw all the time. I feel like he needs more things that aren't a buzzsaw. Blood- Ah! Stay away from the bloody flamethrower. Blimey. And oh my goodness, my day has been interrupted by someone from Vault Tech actually showing up. I guess I shall open the door for him. In terms of character build, there's probably a lot of thought to actually be put into kind of what the right way to actually do this is. To my mind, I think you need slightly less perception than usual. I'll get to why that is in a moment. Mainly because we're back in the days of old Fallout agility rules. Which is basically, agility should be as flipping high as you can get it. Action points are now a lot more important. <laughs> So seriously, you're going to want some agility. Luck, I think, is arguably not quite so important. Intelligence, probably about the same uh, as it ever was. Charisma, no change whatsoever. It's just basically put that high enough. Though, admittedly, I wouldn't mind having a little bit more... Hmm. Maybe I'll take intelligence down a little bit just to fund a bit of uh, endurance. No, don't you sneak... No, don't you sneak... Don't you sneak up. I saw you going up to four. Yeah, that'll do. I'll probably boost agility to nine with your special book, too. That's probably about right. Yeah, to my mind, agility and endurance are a little bit more important than they used to be. Perception, not quite so much. I was thinking we could head to the park for a bit. Weather should hold up. 
Oh, right. The park. With you. Because I want to get pregnant again. You know, I think it's a really big unanswered question about the Fallout pre-war universe. What the hell was the deal with the parks in Boston? So now we're outside and we've actually got a bit of freedom going on here. Let's talk about movement, because movement is very, very important indeed. And I swear, I swear I've already seen you run up there. I think you just, uh... If I just wait long enough, did that family just keep running in a loop? I swear, I've seen you run. Hang the flip on here. We'll keep an eye out for you again. I suspect this family is just running around in a big loop and respawning forever to keep people kind of, you know, running around and panicking even if you take your time actually in the house talking to gods or whatever. Right, there's two movement settings. Basically, you can just move around pretty much as normal where you would just basically use this thing, the little kind of just holding forward and back and left and right in order to move around. I personally refer to that as- There he is! He is flipping there. I knew he was going to show up again. I refer to that as the seasickness setting. Basically, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, there they go again. Right, didn't know that. The neighbours just apparently loop forever. Uh, basically, yeah, I get a headache within 10 seconds of doing that, so I don't do that. I prefer the teleportation controls, which I think are a lot better. Basically, the way they work is uh, you just take this and you hold down. If it's blue, that means that's within kind of like walking distance and you don't use any action points to go there. So you can kind of go like this sort of speed, uh, just kind of day to day. I don't know why this doesn't cause a headache, but me just like holding a button and walking forward smoothly does. I genuinely don't know, but it just does. However, if you want to go further away, then you make it go green. That is basically counted as sprinting, so your action points show up next to your other hand. I know right now they're five controllers. Once I actually get a Pip-Boy and a gun, they'll be replaced by weapons and the Pip-Boy. Uh, but yeah, basically that counts as sprinting. So basically that's as fast as you can go. And when you're out of action points, you can only move uh, this fast. Which is still no offense, I'd say pretty fast, all things considered. And while you're doing that, your action points come back. So that's kind of how movement and action points go. As far as I'm concerned, that's actually how I prefer to play the game by quite a long way. Not least as teleportation has a really nice function that comes into play when we get into combat as well. This is the first bit of the game where the size of VR really becomes a thing, which is bloody hell, people in power armor genuinely look really big and imposing. And the vertebirds even more so. Hang on, let's just sprint forward to a vertebird over here. This is something you can't really see, it's just something you have to experience. In VR, everything is big. Like, a vertebird... It feels like as big as a vertebird should. Like, you know, my head is up to, like, you know, the bottom of the flipping landing stuff. There's massive propellers and all this stuff, and sadly you can't actually uh, warp up into it. Uh, teleportation does actually have a couple of other advantages regarding, like, maybe getting where you wouldn't be allowed to get normally, which is kind of advantageous, but it's massive! It's flipping cute! I love how big things are in VR. It's lovely. Right, let's just kind of get over uh, there in that case. You can also, by the way, without actually turning your head if you prefer to, you can just spin the camera around like 45 degrees ago, like that, which I think is actually quite useful. Also, the nuke is really genuinely a little bit on the intimidating side when you're in VR. I don't like it. Blimey heck. Also, can I just say as someone who is slightly claustrophobic, I don't particularly enjoy the cryopod section anymore. I mean, it was never great. It was just sort of there. But yeah, I don't actually like being kind of trapped in a confined space that generally actually uh, is not a thing I'm fond of. So being trapped in the pod, not so desperately keen on that actually. And there's Kellogg just quickly killing my husband. He wants to peer in here. That's fine. I could peer straight back out after him. Anyway, down into the vault and the game kind of proper begins. There's a rat roach. We'll be murdering him in a second. Let's get ourselves a security bat on. And my Vive controller actually turns into a melee weapon, which is just flipping marvellous. Searching's fun, by the way. The way they've done searching is each of your hands does a different one of the search functions. So if you point your right hand at something, you go into the um, the quick loop menu. So you can just basically get like individual items out of things like that. If you want to actually search more thoroughly, you have to point your left hand at it, which would normally be the pit boy hand, and then you can actually go into like the um, you know the normal menu like that, which is kind of cool. Melee is pretty much exactly what you're probably expecting. When you're holding a melee weapon, you swing it, and if you just swing it at a reasonable speed, it's a swing. There we go, that counts as a swing. Marvellous. So there's another one. And hold down your trigger if you want to do a power attack. Uh, should be a power attack. Okay, possibly there isn't a power attack. I thought you held down the trigger, maybe I've got the power attacks wrong. Anyway, swing, and you do a thing. This means that even if you're swinging it really fast in front of you like this, you only get so many swings in. So you can't basically artificially boost the DPS of melee weapons by just basically kind of holding them out going wiggle, 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 and turning them all into rippers, effectively. No, tragically, that's not the case. There's a rad roach over there. We'll take care of him in just a flipping second. Uh, also, this does create this slightly funny thing, which um, basically, if you hit one of the little kind of the grip buttons on the other controller, there's going 
going to be the pit boy then obviously you go into crouch mode but in crouch mode because you go from up here down to here you can hear there the game considers that you swinging the weapon because the weapon moved from down to up so anytime you enter or leave actual crouch mode then uh, yeah basically it counts as you swinging your weapon which is kind of weird uh, when you're actually inside your crouch mode your blue your walking thing is a lot more limited so basically this counts as creeping so we'll just kind of go up behind the rad roach here get right up behind it and just give it a quick swing and that goes down go into the quick loop menu grab the rad roach meat to my mind melee is not where this game shines because it feels like well I have a problem with, like, melee, the same problem I have with, like, um, all sorts of kind of, like, swordy type games in VR, which is, there's a lack of, like, feedback. Like, when you hit something, because you're not getting proper feedback to it, it doesn't feel like it works to me. When someone hits you with a sword, you get proper feedback to it. So I personally don't think it, like, you know, works as well. Uh, so hang on, there should be another one of you round here. This guy will probably see me. In fact, actually, if he comes over to me in a second, there'll be an excellent chance for us to show off that. So basically, let's go into VATS mode. Vance mode is now slow-mo. Vance mode is also permanent infinite slow-mo. You notice that my action points are not ticking down right now. And there's a guy over there as well. So basically I can have a little look see and if I were to have the relevant perk I could learn information about these guys. Um, the nice thing is however, you can now move in Vance as well. So if I basically decide, you know what, I don't particularly like you being over there. So I'm going to turn around and I'm going to back off a little bit. Then as I actually move, that's going to burn a bit of my action points. So basically I can now move around while in slow-mo mode and kind of like super hot VR a little bit, kind of weirdly. Yeah, as long as you're not doing anything, you're not burning action points. So there's very little reason not to constantly be going into VATS. I'd say, arguably, you're gonna be wanting to go into VATS way more than in the base game. There's no reason not to in every single fight, pretty much. So that's why I was kind of saying, you probably want to be going for a really high agility build. So what I'd probably want to do is wait for that little rad roach to get close to me, then I'm gonna teleport and I'm gonna whack it. So now, now just take it out and come out of this mode. And now I can just grab that and lovely. This is kind of how you deal with swarms of enemies. So now just basically walk over there while my action points come back, uh, go around the corner, flick round. I know there's a third one in here. Is the third one in here? Hang on, what's the third one? Oh, is that the one that goes and dies down there, if you're not careful? Oh, possibly. Fine. Uh, yeah, so you really want to get into the habit of doing that. Because I'm just going to do the next fight without using Vats. And it kind of becomes a bit of a mess. Which is, if I go up to this guy, and you just kind of, yep, yeah, just take him out. And then, like, he, he comes in. And you just basically just end up waggling a stick at things. And I think it's a bit less interesting and a bit less kind of good. Luckily, however, there's a thing that makes the game very good through this next door. The thing that makes the game very good, kind of where this game really shines, uh, is guns. You really want a gun. So now, I've got a gun. Guns are marvellous. Let's also just quickly take an absolute ton of ammo, together with some stim packs. Oh, you notice that, by the way, uh, yeah, your hit points are actually uh, by your hand as well as your action points. So if you kind of want to know how you're doing in that regard, yeah, what you want to do is just hold up your gun, and next to your gun, you'll find your hit points, your ammo, and your action points. Which is very, very useful indeed. Now into crouchy mode, and no, sorry, that's a door that requires a terminal, I forgot how this game works. And yeah, terminals basically just float in front of you, which is fine, and you just operate them as you normally would, with your trigger and your little kind of pad here, you just use that like that. So yep, I believe that is all of that there, very nice. And now let's just go down into hidden and just sneak out into this corridor, nice and quiet. Because this corridor has got itself rad roaches. So now we need to aim a gun. So basically to aim a gun by just lining up the sight. So you can iron sight, but in the real world. So hopefully I'm about to hit this guy. And missed, missed, missed. Got him that time. And then of course, just a little trigger at the side for a reload. So some of our roaches are now coming in. Oh, that was better. That was flipping better. Nailed that one. And then there's one at the end there, which if I can just nail him. No, never mind. Right, so that's it. Oh, you're coming in now. We'll just take you out if we can. And he's coming closer. Oh, yeah. That's nice. So, uh, the way Vats works with guns, by the way, is basically go into Vats. Obviously, that can identify enemies. And then it tells you your chance to hit. So, if I basically take a shot there, it's telling me that's what I'm aiming at. But my probability to hit is still that. So, Vats basically works very, very similar to the base game. Aside from the fact it's just a permanent free slow-mo and you can also move in it. Which I think is a really, really nice addition actually. So kind of, you want to be in it all the time, but I'll try and do this manually if I can. Yes, no, uh, uh, yeah, I got that guy. And then nearly got that guy, 
thing. Yep. Mate, you know I'm just going to get a bit closer. Just get a little bit closer here. I'm technically hidden right now. Uh, oh, you've woken up. That's absolutely fine. So just let them get a bit closer. And boom. I'm going to say boom, 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 boom. Oh, I got that guy. That's absolutely fine. I'm wasting a lot of ammo right now. Probably at this point I should probably just... Boom. Oh, that was better. That was better. Nice. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but this is really where I think the game actually shines, when you actually get uh, the rad roaches in play, and when you actually start getting guns and whatever, because the gunplay feels really nice. Gunplay feels really nice. And, like, you know, the typical VR things still apply. Like, you know, you can kind of aim around corners and lean and whatever, which has always been what makes gunplay in VR very, very nice indeed. Four words for basically a nice rad roach style execution right up to him yeah very hidden very hidden and screw you you rad roachy bastard boom there we go that feels nice to do much of the stuff is a bit more forgiving in the teleportation, how it kind of calculates movement noise or whatever. By the way, you should probably die too. I'm playing this on hard, by the way. I'm playing this on hard rather than very hard and definitely not survival. <laughs> definitely not survival. I'm good. By the way, there's a pit boy down there. Now I've got a pit boy. The pit boy, when you first play it, is amazing. For about 10 minutes, then you will hate the pit boy and really wish you could just shoot the bloody thing. Also, Guns in this game are really big. Like, is a gun actually this big next to how big a pit- well, Okay, how big this pit boy is versus how big it is when it expands? Because this is how pit boy works. Basically, your pit boy is just sort of floating around. Also, I'll move into a darker area for a second because there's a cool thing about the pit boy, which is um, you put the pit boy light on and you actually have to, like, you know, move the pit boy around and actually, like, shine the light into the right location or whatever. It does cast lights around you, but yeah, it casts uh, brighter light if you actually kind of point in the right direction, which is very, very cool indeed. Also, don't forget this cupboard over here, because this cupboard is the cupboard that's got the 10 millimeters in it, so we definitely want to be grabbing that. And I think there's more over... Yep, there's another 7 too. Beautiful. So I wasted a lot of flipping ammo just earlier. So basically, the way the Pip-Boy is supposed to work is if you turn it in such a way as a Pip-Boy should work like this, it expands and basically kind of fills up your vision a little bit. It is a cocky nightmare to flipping use. <laughs> it's an actual flipping nightmare. Uh, basically, I'm holding a Vive controller, and what I want to do is if I want to change tab, I need to basically hit up and down on the round thing, which is quite a flipping pain. However, I slide my finger up and down on the same thing I need to push the buttons up and down on to move between the sub tabs. Say I want to go over to inventory, I need to press... While I'm holding my hand at a weird, slightly uncomfortable angle, I need to press down, and then if I want to change the power, I need to slide to the right without pushing the button up, okay, then actually I can use uh, up and down, so then I can slide basically left and right, I'll be up and down to it's orientated like that, and now I've accidentally gone back to, now I've gone too far to there, now I need to put the glasses on for perception plus one, and that's, that's great, and already like, my arm actually hurts just from doing that for like a minute, because I am basically holding my arm up at a slightly obscure angle while holding a Vive controller, which is not the lightest thing in the flipping world. The map's a nightmare as well. Uh, which is, hang on, if I want to, want to go over to the, want to go over to the map. Uh, yeah, I basically need to do like a weird inverted uh, touchpad thing to, to utilise the map, and that's that's not useful. I mean, think what you would do would be you'd open up the map, and then basically you'd point at it with like a laser pointer coming out of your other hand. But no, your other hand's do using a gun because, and this is something I actually wish was in the base game. Um, Pit Boy does not pause the game. I can continue like firing and fighting while I'm actually using my Pit Boy. <laughs> Which is actually kind of quite cool. I do actually think that's pretty darn cool. So that's nice. So basically, that's something that you're going to want on for like maybe 10 minutes. Just because it's really cool. Then you're going to want to change that. Fortunately, you can. There's a special bunch of like um, settings and particular VR settings that you're going to want to change. So the pit boy location could basically be either on your wrist like I've just shown you. Or you can actually change that over to basically whenever you just push the Pip-Boy button, it just appears in front of you. Or it's just like a projected screen. I think in front is a good compromise. So probably I'm happy with that. So now what happens if I kind of go back into the main game is at this point, now I've actually just got a, a normal Vive controller, which just kind of break immersion a little bit, but whatever. But yeah, basically what I was doing is I was holding this thing up like this and just sliding my hand up and down. And it doesn't really work very well. But now basically I just push a button. And the Pip-Boy screen just appears in front of me, like a giant, terrifying Pip-Boy robot just following me around doing my bidding. 
uh, which is actually a lot easier to flip and use because now I don't actually need to hold my hand up at a stupid angle anymore. Now I can just basically have my hand by my side and flip through the things. It's still difficult to use. Uh, it's still genuinely difficult to use and I don't think it's great to be honest. But equally a fairly fiddly menu, I'm not sure what they could have done. This is just something that doesn't work desperately well, I don't think. Anyway, let's have another really cool moment here. Let's just activate the vault door controls. Because as soon as we activate that and push the little button there, then the vault door is going to be open. And the vault door feels really cocky big. It's another thing that feels really cocky massive. It really does feel absolutely massive. I tell you what, I probably should just kind of, it should stay being the pit boy on your left hand, even if it's actually not the pit boy, just because, actually I guess you can just keep it by your side. There's no reason for this hand to be up, aside from the fact I like gesticulating. It just feels really big and heavy, and VR's great for things that feel big and heavy and whatever. So that's the basics, by the way, just your basics of how your, your action points and your gun and everything works. Ooh, big thing extremely big thing and uh you know what screw waiting for that i'm just gonna teleport forward bye <laughs> yeah it's pretty good it lets you kind of skip forward pretty quickly but actually i think when you're sprinting by virtue of kind of just using teleportation with green i think you can actually move faster through the game than you would probably be able to do if you were actually like you know normally default sprinting also let me skip under there and you can't do that in the base game <laughs> fallout 4 vr speed run who knows and up we come and the game proper begins. And this is... This is the point where I start getting kind of Fallout 4 chills. Because it's... It's Fallout. Except... Everything's... Everything's big. Everything's terrifyingly big. Like that, that tree over there. Why are you not a gun, by the way? You should be a gun. Speaking of which, this is how the favourites menu works now, by the way. If you just hold down the big central button, then anything you've set as a favourite, and of course, in the vault, like, things automatically set as favourites, you can basically uh, just select like that. It's a little bit fiddly, to my mind, but it does work pretty well. Though, yeah, just like in the base game, it does actually pause the game. Tree! It's a bloody massive tree! It feels like it's way up there! It feels like it's way flipping up there! And, and there's Sanctuary Hills... And all sorts of business. Oh, blimey. Right, okay. Let's just do the, the typical looting here. Because there's some very potentially good stuff you can get out of this area. In particular, yellow crate. That is, damn it, Radix. That can have a Molotov in it. I'm sure I've seen Molotovs in there before. Oh, well. First aid box, Stimpak and Radix. I'll gladly take all of that. There's a couple more yellow crates over here as well. Just bear in mind, of course, yeah, my action points are going down while I'm doing all of this. So, Radix. Oh. Radix hot plate and fishing rod. And... Not a single flipping bloody thing. Blimey. Also, I like the fact that obviously when you come out of the vault, there's actually like a whole bunch of um of crows waiting around. They're just sort of there. But as you know in the latest game, all crows are actually institute robots. And the institute actually had a, an interest in the vault because they pulled like, you know, Sean out of there and kept you as the backup. So naturally, they've just got a bunch of crows watching the exit. Which is also how Sean knows the moment you've left the vault. Well, I suppose he gave the signal as well, but how he actually knows you're on your way because he's got the crows actually watching it, which is kind of cool. Anything from you? Not a bloody thing. Not one throwable. During my little test recording, just kind of testing various ways to try and record this game, I got flipping two Molotovs out of those boxes. It's also really, really bloody weird for Sanctuary to be this, like, you know, big... Those are house-sized houses. Those houses are house-sized. Also, another cool thing about teleportation, there's actually an advantage. Uh, in the base game, obviously, you can't just make it through those windows. Those windows you're not allowed to, um, to cut through. But with teleportation, let's just go over towards this window over here, you absolutely can. Basically, as long as you've got line of sight in a scenario you're allowed to travel into, you can totally just uh, basically climb through windows and stuff that actually in the base game, you're not allowed to do. Which is actually kind of cool. Uh, because that actually is, oh, that's actually useful. Uh, because enemies can't. Enemies can't teleport through those windows. They have to play by normal rules. So, uh, yeah, it's actually kind of cool that that's a thing. Ah, there's a flipping bobby pin as well. Ah, lock picking. Let's talk about lock picking. Where's the nearest safe? There's a couple of safes uh, dotted around Sanctuary Hills. Let's go find one of them. Ah, here we go. One under the baby's crib in the house at the end with a couple of bloke flies. Yes, so, safes. 
Safes are different now. Basically, what you're doing at this point is you are deciding where you want the bobby pin to go by holding up your Vive controller and then just basically flicking your finger around to wherever you want the bobby pin to be. Except, unlike in the base game, you can't then very gently turn the screwdriver around to figure out where the sweet spot is. The only way to turn the screwdriver is just to push the actual um, trigger at the back, where the screwdriver will just basically start going round at all flipping speed. So it's much, much easier to break your... There you go, I just broke a bobby pin. Um, it's much, much easier to break your bobby pins than in the base game. Also, here's something cool for VR. You don't actually need to be looking at something to actually, like, be doing it. So this bloatfly here has a bloatfly gland on it. As long as I'm pointing at it, I can interact with it. So even if I turn over here, you hear that you just heard the schloop of me pulling its gland out. I've actually pulled the gland out. So you can actually do things without actually looking at them, which is really cool and has always been an advantage of VR. Admittedly, it kind of makes it a bit sad that Fallout 4 VR doesn't have dual wielding. There's no such thing as dual wielding in this game. Because, yeah, one of the big things that was really cool about Serious Sam VR was obviously what you could do would be, you know, shoot at one enemy that's coming over there, but knowing there's more enemies coming from that direction. You could be firing your second gun over there without actually looking over there, knowing they were still going to be there, which was really cool, but sadly, not in Fallout 4. And yeah, as I mentioned, you're special, I will totally just take more agility. Because yeah, you really, really, really want to be in Vats pretty much constantly in this game. So uh, having as many action points as possible, and also having them come back as quickly as possible, good idea. I'll take Grognak the Barbarian too. Honestly, I feel like guns feel so much nicer to use than melee weapons, just from my limited experience so far. I wouldn't really recommend a melee build, just because... Uh, it just feels a little bit just like wiggling at things. It feels like, it doesn't feel like there's a huge amount of tactics going on. So, yeah, I personally wouldn't recommend that. And of course, it wouldn't actually be Fallout 4 if you didn't pick up two frag grenades on your way out to Sanctuary Hills. I wouldn't really recommend using them, to be honest. I mean, I'll set them, obviously, but, um... I wouldn't really recommend it, because you see, in the base game, what happens is, of course, and there we are, we've now got two grenades up there as well, very, very useful indeed. In the base game, throwables are super-powered mega weapons that basically let you beat really, really powerful stuff in the really, really early game. In Fallout 4 VR, instead, throwables have been demoted to a hilarious way to commit suicide. Now, let's just go and meet up with dog meat or VR... Actually, weirdly big. Like... For a German Shepherd, that's, that's weirdly tall. That's like, that's up to kind of like, you know, top of my chest height. Like, I know you're a big dog, but that's an excessively big dog. Now, let's just quickly go and trigger the mole rats. The mole rats are terrifying, because the mole rats are going to also just very quickly, just kind of, you know, go through here, grab all that stuff. Now, let's get up on top of something, because the mole rats are about to come out, and the mole rats are truly scary. Where are the mole rats? Come on, I feel like we should have triggered them by now. Yeah, pretty much the moment the mole rats show up, I'm going to be wanting to hit vats. Also, I probably shouldn't even be thinking about this when I'm not at full health. This is hard mode, and this is a mode I'm not used to. There we are, hit points tick up. Nice to see it happening so bloody quickly outside of survival mode. Okay, just move down nice and slow. And remember, if we just pass through this area, I can hit vats at any point. Come on, where are you bastards? I know you're going to show up sooner or later. Oh. I think I hear something. Yeah, I think I see him too. Hello. No, okay, dog meat's taking out one. Right now, slow mode. And now, obviously, we've got ourselves 70% chance to hit there. Honestly, I feel like I could do better than that just outside of slow mode. So, yeah, I'm just going to shoot him. A point blank range, actually. Then, oh, blimey, there's one over there too. Yeah, if they get on top of you, just reload. If they get on top of you, move forward. Anyone left? Good work, dog meat. Just quickly check here. No, I'm in danger. I'm in danger, there's more yet. Right, move, 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 move. Where are they? Oh, hang on, I heard something. Yeah, there it is. Right, there we go. So, boom. And that just starts building up criticals. Criticals work pretty much exactly the same way as the base game, by the way. Yeah, you just kind of need to hit things while in vats. Obviously, normal shots don't count. And then, basically, when you're pointing at something, you just hit a button, and then you fire, and you're guaranteed to hit, and it's going to do damage. Uh, have we actually, actually, we must be getting close to a level up. I'd like to show off a level up at least. Let's just see if we can sneak up on these here. Bloat flies feeding. No, they're not bloat flies, sorry. They're the, the other sort, right? Just sneak up. Sneak up and boom. Right, you're dead. And I just need to hit you again. Just there you go. Job done. Right, 
So, we've pretty much made it to Con Concord. It feels really big. <laughs> feels like a proper flipping town. Hello, dog mists. In many ways, companions don't help that much because companions kind of freak me out because Dobby just runs in and I see something in the corner of my vision and I freak out. And it's actually my reliable dog friend and everything's fine. Oh, we've made it to Concord and apparently we actually already are into the next level. I just sort of missed that. Hang on, that's good. That means we can do a level up. So to do that, just go over to stats and then hit your trigger. And you level up right there. Marvellous. Uh, interestingly, they barely have to make any changes. But actually, some of them I'm a little bit confused by. I feel like some of them kind of need changes made. Like, uh, I was wondering what they were going to do to, for example, moving target. Because, uh, yeah, moving target says when you're sprinting, you gain damage resistance and energy resistance. But in this game, you sprint by teleporting. So, can you be hit while you're teleporting? I don't know if moving target has now officially become, like, completely 100% useless. It kind of feels like that might be the case. Also, am I really up to... No, sorry. I wasn't 9, not 10. I thought I wasn't high enough. I might... You know what? Probably wouldn't be a terrible idea just to basically say, you know what? I'm just going to boost my agility straight to 10. Have more flipping action points. Action points are a good thing. But instead, actually, I'd recommend Action Girl or Action Boy fairly early on in this particular playthrough. So, yeah. I'm going to totally just take a rank of Action Girl if flipping immediately. Because that just feels like a really good thing for me in terms of just getting the... Hang on, if I just kind of get the action points down a bit. And then how fast are you going to come back now? Anytime you're flipping right... There you go. Right, so. Moving into Concord. <laughs> oh, blimey. It's, it's, it's big. It's really big. It's a big thing, which I probably should, like, you know, expect. Uh, but first, obviously, we've now got to go and help out bloody Preston Garvey. Right, he's currently had... Oh, I think he's just had a Molotov thrown at him as well. <laughs> Hilarious, you stupid bastard. Right, let's go find some people to murder. Because now, basically, I want to be... Well, okay, let's just go over here. See what we've got as an option here. So, in VATS, I've got myself a... Actually, I don't have a chance to hit there. Sometimes chance to hit doesn't seem to show up, and I'm not really sure why. Well, I've definitely hit that guy... So, and I've hit him again. I've hit him a third time as well. Marvellous. And my action points are still pretty high for the time being. Now I'm getting a chance to hit. Mysterious doesn't seem to show. Also, really cool, because it's all in slow-mo, but you can keep looking around and moving. The bullet casings are all floating around, and you can reload too. But obviously that uses up a little bit of action points. Not much, though. Not much at all. I think you are paying attention to me right now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm just going to teleport forward one level. Just to show you how much action points that uses. So moving is pretty intensive on that front. So I'm just going to quickly, actually, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no, I'm going to try and use a throwable and not blow myself up. So cancel that and grenade. The grenades don't go very far. That's the thing. I think I might have killed him anyway. <laughs> and now also I'm being shot, by the way, so that's good. Uh, yeah, now go into that. Let's actually get some, yeah, 50%. Keep going. That was a hit and you've exploded. Anyone else? Reload quickly. I think we're okay for the time being. Well, actually, he's not yelling at me. Suggesting there's still someone. Yeah, he knows someone else is still out there. He's not yelling at me yet. And also just quickly... Oh, you've got a Molotov cocktail. Grab that laser musket and help us, please! I don't actually care! And also, out of time has been completed. That's just... Oh, and that's enough for another level up as well. Marvellous. Grab myself the laser musket and some fusion cells and a surveyor outfit and all of the rest of that. So the implication was I needed to charge this thing by... Oh, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. That was not the right thing to do. Yeah, I need to hold to charge. How do we charge you? The implication was you needed to press this thing repeat. Okay, I think I've already charged it. Yeah? No, don't hold, because hold is how you drop grenades. Like I just did to myself over there. Don't do that. Instead, just basically, yeah, you do need to just kind of tap that, then it charges up. Then you can just aim down its sights and... Probably miss. Yeah, I think I just I was aiming for the car, so I did miss. You know what I do want to do to wrap up actually? I want to climb this flipping church. Because I want to see how good the view is for the top. Because I'm playing this on my new computer, by the way. Just bought a new computer. Really quite nice, expensive one, all things considered. One of the new flipping i9 CPUs. There's a flipping uh, NVIDIA uh, 1080 Titan inside this thing. So it's pretty bloody good. But even then, the game basically prompted me to, like, have the, uh, the various actor fade options down a little bit lower than I might normally have. Also, that's totally another Molotov there. I'll be having that, if nothing else. Oh, I'm gonna be honest, um, yeah, doing a spiral staircase in teleportation mode, that's a little bit on the tricky side. <laughs> that doesn't work so hot, but here we go. I think I've managed to make it up here. Oh, another nice thing about teleportation mode, by the way, um, it's physically impossible to throw yourself to your death. 
because the game basically says, uh, yeah, you wouldn't be allowed to go there, because that'd be, oh. It didn't let you throw yourself to your death earlier. Possibly it'll let me throw myself to my death now. It seems much more keen on me throwing myself to my death on this occasion. But yeah, if you try and basically throw yourself off into midair, it will actually basically say, no, you're not allowed to do that. Apart from when it decides you just sort of can't. Wait, it's saying that's okay. Okay, weirdly it's saying this is okay now, and now I'm worried, so I'm just going to kind of save just in case. And I'm going to see if I can kill myself. Before we do that, have a little looks around here. So we've got kind of Boston in the distance over there, and there's the um, the Olivia satellite array, and all of Concord, and then kind of behind me over there, various bits and pieces. Ooh. It's really weird. It's so big. It's really cocking big. Uh, right, are you going to be fiddly about this? Because you just said I could jump off to my... Ooh. Apparently that would be okay. Hang on, hang on. I need to find a, I need to find a place that's gonna... Is that okay? Okay, now I'm just standing on thin air and I don't like it. I don't actually like that one little bit because this is, this is, this is the problem with VR. I, I generally suffer from vertigo in VR. But yeah, I can basically go down there and I'd suffer no fall damage because it would be a teleportation action. So uh, the game's pretty generous uh, in that regard, which is kind of cool. Anything else I can do? Yeah, I can go over there. And this is fine. Apparently I'm standing on something. And I can also teleport down. This doesn't feel like it should be fine, actually, game, but all right, fine. We can teleport down here as well. Hang on. Let's just quickly uh, teleport our way up onto here. Now, let's see if we can do the old uh, the old cheat, by the way. Because, of course, the old, uh, the old cheat that's always been in this game is you can basically teleport, or rather you can jump from... Yep, here we go. Oh, it's actually way easier in VR. <laughs> the old cheat is way easier in VR now. Because, uh, yeah, you can basically, in the base game, you can jump from the church over there over to the helicopter. Sorry, vertebrate. Uh, and it's actually way easier now with teleportation controls. So, screw it. Well, actually, technically, I don't actually have a, I don't actually have a fusion uh, core. But I could have got a fusion core. Could have got that one from going into the kind of the, um, the Morat Warren close by to Red Rockets. There we are. That's remarkably easy to do. In fact, actually, I think it's a bit easier to explore in general. Because uh, you can just basically teleport onto the top of buildings a lot more easily. So you can kind of do a bit more rooftop travel in this game than you could uh, in the previous one, to my mind. I wouldn't say the previous one, like this one. Oh, there's Corvega over there. <laughs> so weird. It's so flipping weird. This is... This is the biggest, most ambitious experiment thing has ever actually been done in VR. Maybe kind of tied with Skyrim. Both of them are pretty ambitious. But Skyrim equally, in many ways, like, I think has less moving parts than Fallout 4. So, <laughs> here we are. Welcome to the flipping Commonwealth, eh? And you know what else, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to your little midweek mini-series, I would say. Because we are definitely going to dive into this a little bit further. I just want to play around some stuff. Because there's a few kind of unanswered questions I'd like to go into. In particular, related to some of the perks. Like, for example, some of them literally don't seem to make much in the way of sense anymore. So we just kind of go into the, uh, the perk tape. Why can't I go into the perk Oh, you need to be in stats to go into the perk table. There we flipping are. Like, one of them doesn't make sense to me. Oh, yeah, I've actually leveled up, by the way. Uh, one of them doesn't make sense to me is Demolition Expert Rank 2 still gains uh, grenades have a throwing arc. How do grenades have a throwing arc when the distance they go is determined by me throwing them? Because I'm allowed to drop that one and I threw the other one. So that doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. So some of them don't seem to quite work to my mind. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how exactly they're supposed to be working. But you know what's never a bad idea? Lone Wanderer's never a bad idea. Doesn't matter how much you change the rules of this game. Yeah, taking Lone Wanderer, that's a good idea. Boom. Lone Wanderer 1. Marvellous. Carry weight up by 50-15% less damage every flipping time. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? Let's leave things off there as I've kind of shown off some of the mechanics and fun stuff, I think, of Fallout 4 VR. We will definitely be visiting this just for a few days. I don't intend this video for, like, a full series or anything. I think what we might do is we might actually go on a road trip. I might actually go on a little road trip across this whole area, kind of trying to, you know, visit all the different areas of interest, meet some different enemy types, and uh, explore the city. Maybe we'll try and, yeah, pick a destination somewhere really far out of the way, like... End of the Glowing Sea, Spectacle Island, something like that. That might be fun. I think, yeah, this week we're just going to do a little midweek mini-series Fallout 4 road trip. Yeah, that'll be good. Then we're going to do that. And we'll kick off tomorrow by actually getting to grips with the combat a bit better by storming the Museum of Freedom, which I'm already on top of, but screw it. I am just lord and master of all I flipping survey. So we will start off by doing that tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this 
is Fallout 4 VR. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. No, John. <laughs> oh, he likes that. <laughs> the Romans touched me. <laughs>